What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today I'm going to be showing you more than 20 awesome tips, tricks, and hidden features on the brand new iPhone XS and XS Max. Some of these you may know, but you are probably not aware of most of the ones in this video, especially if you did not have an iPhone X or of course if you haven't used an iPhone before at all. But even if you did have an iPhone X, you probably will learn something new in this video. All right, so let's not waste any time, let's get straight to it. Now, although the iPhone XS is very similar to the iPhone X, there is an exclusive feature and that is the ability to adjust the bokeh after taking a portrait photo. So let's go into our camera on the iPhone XS Max here. Let's go over to portrait. Let's switch it around to selfie and take a quick portrait selfie real quick. And now let's go to that photo, click on edit, and you can see down here we can actually adjust the blur or the bokeh in the background. So this is very cool and you also get different types of edits you can make to the actual portrait photo. So you can do contour light, you can do stage light, which I actually really like. That was a terrible picture of me, but oh well. We got stage light mono, and you can just change between all of these different portrait modes. And pair that with being able to adjust the bokeh, this is an awesome feature on the iPhone XS and XS Max. And speaking of the camera, let's go ahead out of here and into settings. Let's go to our camera settings. And in here is where you're gonna be able to change how you record video in slow-mo, what quality you record it in. So you can see I have mine set at 4K at 30, but you can also do 4K at 60. And you can see right here, it gives you a little pop-up saying that 4K60 will only play on macOS High Sierra or later. So you definitely want to be recording at 4K unless you're just really trying to save space. You want to record at the max quality so you can get the best quality when you actually go to upload that video or just watch the video back. And then you also want to make sure that you have auto low light FPS enabled. And if we go back, you want to make sure that smart HDR is also enabled. You can also consider the keep normal photo enabled if you want to, but I don't like having duplicates. And then if we go down here to formats, you actually have the high efficiency and the most compatible picture format. So basically the most compatible format is just going to be JPEG and the high efficiency is going to save the file as an HEIF file. Now I did used to use high efficiency with my iPhone 10, but I opted to go with most compatible here with the 10s. And the reason for that is because when I went to transfer photos to my computer, it actually transferred them since I had high efficiency checked off as HEIF. And some computers will not be able to read that file. So JPEG is most likely what you're going to want here. Unless of course you don't have much storage space and then you'll want to do high efficiency. So yeah, configure the camera settings to your liking, but that is where you change all of those settings. If we go back to our settings and go into battery and we take a look at the graph here, you can actually pinpoint exactly what is using the most battery life at what specific time. So you can see, if you see like a big drop, so it looks like right about here, it's hard to zoom in. You can't really zoom in at all, so it's hard to see really. But if you go to about right here, that's when my battery started to drop a little bit. So now that I see that, I'm gonna go down here and look, okay, so Antutu benchmark was running, that's why my battery dropped so much. So the tip here is to look at the graph, see when there's little dips right there and take a look down here and see what was actually using the most battery life at that time. And it actually shows you the exact specific time right here. So 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. I had my screen on for 49 minutes of those 60 minutes and 31% of the battery life was taken away by Antutu. 22% of my battery was taken away by Antutu Benchmark. 22% was taken away by Asphalt 9 and so on. You can also tap on this chart down here as well. It's a little bit better because it is bigger and easier to tap on, but definitely pay attention to the dips and your battery life and see what was the reason for that dip. Another tip is that swiping from the bottom back and forth is an easy way to get in and out of applications here on the iPhone XS. This is my preferred way to go back and forth between applications. I don't like going through every single one, but if you just need to get back and forth between an application, like if you copied something and you need to go back to that other application to paste it, you can simply do so by swiping on the little bar on the bottom. This is super, super useful. I use it all the time with my iPhone X and you definitely need to know this with the iPhone XS and XS Max. Now I've seen a lot of people who have iPhones who still use applications to scan and sign documents. And every time I see that, I just scratch my head. And the reason being, is because you can actually scan and sign documents straight from within iOS. You don't need an application. So if we go into notes, create a new note. If we click on this little plus right here, scan documents, and say this is a document right here. Let's take a picture of the document. And if we click on it right there, we'll just click done. We're gonna save. And now that we have the document, let's click on it. Let's click the share icon up in the top right. Go to markup, click on the plus. And this is where you can actually add in a signature. So you can see I have mine preset in there. I can actually add my signature to the document, modify the size of it and everything. So I use this all the time when I need to scan and send documents. No third party application necessary. So you guys may know about the control center, but you may not know about a certain toggle inside of control center. So if we go into our control center, customize controls. If we go all the way down and do text size, this is a very underutilized 
tool in the control center. So we can actually change our text size straight from within the control center. So if you maybe hand your phone to somebody who can't read small text, this is a quick and easy way to change that text size. And speaking of the control center, you can also 3D touch on most of the platters on here to get more details. So if you airdrop things, you can 3D touch on this platter right here and you get access to airdrop. You can 3D touch on the music like you saw. You can 3D touch on the brightness, on the volume. You can 3D touch on do not disturb. And you can 3D touch on most of the toggles inside of the control center. So you should definitely play around with that because it is a quick and easy way for more quick actions within these toggles. The next tip is using Face ID for Safari autofill. So if we go into our settings, Face ID and passcode, you wanna make sure that password autofill is enabled. This is gonna allow you to go into Safari and actually enter in passcodes by simply putting in your Face ID. So for instance, if we go to developer.apple.com, you can see I have my password saved right here. If I click on that, it'll scan my face and voila, I am signed in just like that. So using Face ID for Safari autofill to autofill your passwords is a quick and easy way to log in very quickly quickly. And Face ID is also used all over the OS for banking applications and things like that. So it's very important that you do have Face ID set up and these settings configured properly for it. Now, if you're new to the iPhone 10 or the 10s, you will not have a home button. So you're probably wondering, how do you get reachability? A lot of people actually think that reachability is missing in the iPhone 10 and 10s, but that is not true. If we go to settings, general accessibility, and all the way down here, we have reachability. So if we enable that, go back to the home screen and swipe down you see that we get reachability invoked. So it may take a little bit to get used to, but just swipe down, you will get the hang of it. And this is a quick and easy way to pull down Control Center as well if you're maybe just using one hand, or if your hands just aren't big enough to reach all the way up there all the time, this is a quick and easy way to do so. And reachability just has so many different use cases. I don't use it that much because I do have decent sized hands, but some people use reachability a lot. Now, if you web browse a lot, which I'm sure most of you guys probably do, you're gonna want to block ads in Safari because I'm sure that advertisements get on your nerve every single day. And it's actually actually really easy to block ads in Safari. I haven't seen an ad in who knows how long inside of Safari. I see them all the time in Facebook and YouTube, but in Safari, I don't see them that often because I do block them. So I just use ad block. I will have a link for this down in the description below. And once I have that enabled, if I go back to settings, if I go to Safari content blockers and make sure I have this set, you can see I use one blocker and ad blocker combination. So I definitely do not get any ads in Safari. So I would definitely recommend doing that because ads are very annoying and very intrusive sometimes. So that is a good way to block them in Safari. Safari for good. Now, another interesting feature on the iPhone 10s Max is that you can get a sort of dark mode. So if you go to our settings, go to general accessibility, display accommodations, invert colors, and smart invert is kind of like dark mode here on the iPhone. So you can see our icons do look a little bit different, but if you go into our applications, you'll see that a lot of them are actually dark themed, especially the settings actually looks really good. And you can see it describes it as smart invert colors, reverses the colors of the display, except for images, media, and some apps that use dark color styles. So this is pretty cool. It's kind of like a system wide dark UI, although it does make the home screen look a little bit weird. Some of these applications, just the colors look off, but it is there if you do want to test it out, a really cool feature on on the iPhone 10s Max and iOS 12. And the next tip applies to those of you who did also come from an iPhone with a home button. You probably always try to press down there where the home button used to be, but now you can actually get a virtual home button on the iPhone 10s. So if you go to our settings, general accessibility, scroll all the way down to assistive touch, enable that. You can see we now have a virtual home button and you can move it wherever you want on the screen. Most people would probably opt to put it right where the home button used to be. And if you tap on it, you can see it does take you home just like a home button. And you can also of course change with the single tap, the double tap, the long press and the 3D touch do as well. You can change the opacity. You can customize the whole top level menu. There are just a lot of things to change in here, which makes this really cool and very useful for those of you that actually want a virtual home button. Now me personally, I don't like it because it just doesn't look clean. It just takes away from the cleanness of the UI and I'm just used to having no home button and I don't like having a home button, but you may want to use this. The next tip is another one that I've ranted and raved about and that is Siri shortcuts. Now I've made a full video that's over 10 minutes long on Siri shortcuts and how to create your own shortcuts, but basically the gist of it is it's gonna allow you to automate certain tasks. And what it's gonna do is plug into Siri so you can tell Siri custom commands and it will do whatever you want. So the one I always show off to people is the calculate tip shortcut. So if I click on that, Say we went out to eat and our bill is 32.85 and I have this set up so the menu shows how much I would like to tip, so say 15%, then it will give you a pop-up showing what the tip and the total will be. And I know this is just a very broad explanation, but Siri shortcuts are extremely useful and I highly suggest watching that video. Like I said, if you go into the settings here, go to this button right here and you can set the phrase right here. So when I say calculate tip, it will pop that up and ask me how much and everything like that. And you can also go over to the widgets panel right here and you can see all the shortcuts once you add it. I would definitely get familiar 
here with Siri shortcuts because they are going to be a big part of iOS in the future. I mean, they kind of are right now with iOS 12. Now, speaking of Siri, did you know that you don't actually have to talk to Siri? You can actually type to Siri. So say you're in a quiet place like a library or something like that, and you have a lot of people around you and you don't want everybody to hear you talking to your phone, but you also want to use Siri. So if we go into our settings, go to general accessibility, scroll all the way down to Siri and type to Siri is right here. So now when we invoke Siri, you can see it pops up a prompt to actually type instead of talk. So if we say, what's the weather? You can see it pulls up the weather just like that without actually having to talk to Siri. So once again, that could be very useful in certain situations. Now, once again, if you came from an iPhone with a home button, you used the home button in the past to take a screenshot. So now how do you take a screenshot on the iPhone XS? So all you have to do is press the volume up and the side button at the same time. Just like so, we have a screenshot. Now it's down in the bottom. We can either slide over to save it or tap on it to edit it. And inside of here, you can actually mark up the photo as well. You can crop it as well if you want to. So you can see we could just circle things. If we click on the little plus right here, we can add in a signature text or a magnifier. We could also add in shapes like arrows and circles. And if you click on this little circle right here, you can actually change the color. You get a full color wheel. So if you wanted to circle something in a red, we could do so just like that. And there are just a lot of different ways you can mark up and edit your screenshots. And once you click done, you can either save it or delete it. Another cool new application with iOS 12 is the measure application. So what this does is it uses AR to measure things. And I've actually used this a lot to measure things in the house, and it's actually very accurate. So all you have to do is move the phone and you can actually start measuring things. Now I'm not going to do it just because I don't want to move my phone, but you do also have a level, which is pretty cool. So you can see my phone is not completely level. Let's level it out there. So that is pretty useful for me and my videos as well. So if we go back to measure, you can do that right there. Just check it out and play around with it. It's actually pretty cool. There's not really a tip inside of the measure application. I just wanted you to be aware that it actually exists and it's actually on your phone. Now, if we go to our keyboard and we 3d touch on the emoji icon down here in the bottom left, you'll see you get new options here. And on here, are two options for a one-handed keyboard. So for right-handed, you can see we could go over here and we have a one-handed keyboard. And once again, this is very useful if you don't have big hands or maybe you're laying on your side and you want all of the keys to be over on that side, you can do so. And once you click on the arrow right here, it goes back to normal. If we go back in 3D Touch, you can see you could change between different keyboards as well, or you could do it to the left side if you want to. So just a very useful tip for the keyboard there. The next tip is probably one that you don't know because you probably still hold your power button when it's booting up. So when your iPhone XS or XS Max is completely turned off, all you have to do is simply tap on the power button right here or the side button, whatever you want to call it, and it will turn on. You don't have to hold it. You don't have to hold it and wait for the Apple logo. You just simply tap it and that's it. And the same does apply for the iPhone 10 as well. The next tip is about another setting that I just want you to know about, and that is emergency SOS. Now, of course, I hope you never have to use this, but it is very useful for certain situations. So basically you can call emergency services, AKA the police, by simply tapping on the side button five times rapidly. And of course it will have a countdown sound if you do have this enabled so you know what you are doing, but this is a quick and easy way to do so discreetly if you ever need it to. But of course, if somebody did break into your house and you want to call police without them hearing you, definitely turn the countdown sound off because it is very loud and that person that broke into your house will definitely find you. Sorry to put that image in your head, but I just had to say it. The next tip is that you can move multiple applications to a different page at once. If you start moving something around and you tap on all these icons, you can see you can move all of these to a new page if you wanted to. So this is a quick and easy way to organize your home screen. And once you get into wiggle mode, you can either click done at the top right or you can just swipe up from the home button at the bottom or the home bar, I should say. And the final tip is a way to get to the very top of the screen or the top of your feed in any application like Safari, like Twitter in this instance. So you can see I have a lot of tweets up there and I'm not even close to the top, but if I tap on the top left, you can see I go all the way up to the top of my feed. And if I scroll down, click on the top right, you can see it does the same thing. Now let's just try it inside of Safari. So if you go all the way down here, tap on the top right or left, you can see it takes me to the top of the web page. Super useful feature. Again, I use it every single day and you definitely will too once you start getting the hang of it. So there you have it guys. There are more than 20 tips, tricks, and hidden features for the iPhone XS, XS Max, and also some for iOS 12. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also make sure to leave a comment down below with what your favorite feature was. And if you have any other features you think could be added to the video. Also make sure to subscribe for a lot more iPhone XS, XS Max coverage, reviews, all that fun stuff. But thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you soon.